Hello students, welcome to today's lecture of theory of machines. Today we are going to discuss the topic degrees of freedom. So as you can see here in the picture that any unconstrained rigid body in space can describe basically six independent motions. What are the six independent motions of this spatial body? There are three translational motion, along any three mutually perpendicular axes, shown here as x, y and z axis, right? And they can also have three rotational motions about these axes, right? So, basically this free body or this unconstrained body in space can have six independent motions. It can move in the x direction, it can move in the y direction, it can also move in the z direction. Similarly, this body is free to rotate about the x axis, this can also rotate about the y axis and similarly this is free to rotate about the z axis. Thus, a unconstrained rigid body in space possesses six degrees of freedom. So, an unconstrained rigid body in space possesses six degrees of freedom. So, in short, we can say that the degrees of freedom of a body can be defined as the number of independent motion that the body can have. It may be translational or rotational, right? Now, let me demonstrate this with the help of an animation. So, you can see that this is a body. There is a cube which is unconstrained and it is placed in a three-dimensional space, right? And the coordinates that we are defining here are x, y, and z axes. Here, this red color arrow is representing the x axis, and this green color arrow is representing the y axis, and this blue color arrow is representing the z axis. Okay? So, here you can see that the body can translate in the x direction, this is translation in the y direction, and this is the translation in z direction. So, this body is free to translate or it can have translation motion in x, y and z directions, right? These are the three translation motion that the body can possess. Similarly, this body is free to rotate about the x-axis. So, you can see that this body has rotated about this red axis, that is the x-axis. And the y and the z axis have changed their positions, right? Let's see in the three dimensional view. So, this is the rotation about the x axis. Similarly, the body can rotate about the y axis as shown here. This is the rotation about the y axis that is the green axis. This is the three dimensional view of the rotation about the y axis that is the green axis, right? And this body is also free to rotate about the z axis that is the blue axis. So, let us see that. So, this is the rotation about the z-axis, that is the blue axis. Let us also see the rotation about the z-axis in the three-dimensional view. So, this is the rotation about the z-axis in the three-dimensional view. So, as we can see here with this animation that an unconstrained body in space can have six independent motions, three translational and three rotational. That is, translational motion along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis and three rotational motions about x-axis, about y-axis and about z-axis, right? So, this is about the degrees of freedom of a rigid body 
in space. So an unconstrained rigid body in space possesses 6 degrees of freedom. Right? Let us now understand this by an example of an aeroplane. So let us consider an aircraft as a rigid body in space. So as you can see uh, from this figure that it has three axes. One is the longitudinal axis. This axis we can consider as our x-axis. Another axis it has as a lateral axis, we can, which we can take it as a y-axis. And the third axis that aircraft has is a normal which we can consider as a z right? So, this aircraft in space can have basically three translational and three rotational motions. So, this aircraft basically can move forward or rearward along this longitudinal axis or which is our x-axis, right? So, it can have translational motion along this longitudinal axis. And this translational motion along the longitudinal axis is known as surging. This is just for extra information. Similarly, this aircraft can move left and right above the lateral axis that is a y-axis. So this is the second translational motion along the y-axis. And this left and right motion of the aircraft basically is known as swaying. Similarly, this aircraft can also have translational motion about the normal axis, that is the z axis. So it can go up or it can come down. Right? This up down motion along the normal axis or a z axis is known as EV. So we have seen that this aircraft can have three translational motions along the longitudinal, lateral and normal axis. Similarly, this aircraft can also have three rotational motions. So the rotational motion about the lateral axis will make the aeroplane either dip or it may move up. So this is basically known as pitching or the pitch motion, right? So this will make the aeroplane to come down or to go up, right? So this is the rotational motion about the y-axis or the lateral axis. Similarly, it can have rotational motion about the longitudinal axis and that motion is known as rolling motion. So this rotational motion along the x-axis or the longitudinal axis will make the aeroplane roll left or right. So this is the second rotational motion. Similarly, this aircraft can have a rotational motion about the normal axis and that is basically the yaw motion. This will make the aircraft to move left or right. So this is the third rotational motion about the normal axis or the z axis. The aircraft can have basically degree of freedom of 6. There will be 3 translational plus 3 rotational. Okay. So these 6 motions are basically independent to each other. The expired, the degree of freedom of this aircraft will be 6. Right? So these motions can be understood by mm, this picture. So this picture shows that aircraft can translate along this longitudinal axis. It can also translate along this lateral axis towards left or right. And it can also have the translation motion up and down along the normal axis. Similarly, you can pitch up and down along the lateral axis, you can roll left and right and you can also yaw left and right along the 
longitudinal and normal axis respectively. So these are the six independent motions that an aircraft can have or any free body in space can have. Right? So this is about the degrees of freedom of a unconstrained rigid body in space. Right? So I hope you have understood the concept of degrees of freedom. So basically degrees of freedom is defined as the number of independent motions that a body can possess. Right? So this is all for today. Thank you very much.